if you've ever needed a spring for a project, you no longer need to go to the store and buy one because I'm going to show you how to make one. Keep watching. So making your own springs, your own custom springs is actually a lot easier than you think. Here we got a nice probably five inch spring, got some good tension to it. But what you're going to need is actually spring steel, obviously, of course. And the easiest way to find that is go to Amazon, something like that. I'll go put a link below, but to get music wire. And music wire comes in a bunch of different sizes, gauges, um, thicker, the stronger your spring is going to be, but also the thicker, the harder they are to make. Um, something like this, you know, we can go a lot thicker than this, but you know, some applications you want to use this thinner stuff. You could use two springs to get the pull power, but for most automotive and just general purpose stuff, you can make all the springs you would ever need just by playing around with music wire. You can also get it for free by scavenging up from tires. And if you watch to the very end, I'll show you how I did that. So to make a spring about this long, this took about 15 feet of actual of wire. Here we got about a four feet piece. And so what I'll do is I'll just, I'll put a 90 degree bend on it. And this spring, you can see the diameter difference of how much, because it's a spring, you wrap it around this, springs out. So I just have this, this little end on here does nothing. This is just a random scrap I have. To make different size springs, you'll just use different diameters of rod. And I got a good 90 degree bend on it. I'm gonna jam that in. And it's just loose, but I got it jammed in far enough where the drill will actually hold it. And now I can begin. So I wanna be able to apply tension to this at all times. You can use a gloved hand, or I also like to take a, a, a towel or rag or something to that effect and put a pair of ice grips around it. And that kind of gives me control as well of, of force on this wire. And then I got the drill in reverse. I got it on low speed, so we'll go. Now the idea is, is I want to go, I want the wire when it wraps around to actually hit on itself again and fall off forward, not fall off backwards. I don't want to go at an angle and just wrap them all the way out or else I won't end up with a nice tight spring. I'll end up with a spring that's automatically loose. And I guess if I was doing a compression spring, so I wanted a spring that had compression, I would do it that way. But for most pull springs, um, you'll lay it on itself. You'll see. Now, this is where you got to be a little careful because this whole thing is under tension now. Not a ton of tension. It's a light little spring. We'll just take this off and I'm just going to feed it around a couple times just by hand. And the longer the spring is, the more tension it's going to be under. But it's, it's manageable. These are pretty weak springs. There's our spring. If I didn't have this little doodad, you could just slide it off the end. But that is my spring. So this is how I like to do my ends. I take the, because um, the first part of the spring is going to be a little damaged, so I just take some dikes and I just trim off any damaged piece. And then you just take a pair of needle nose and you slide it in where this is coming down. We're going to bend it right next to that. So I slide it into the next groove, bring it right down to there and bend it up. Put my finger and just bend it up. Same thing with the other side. We'll just slide it in between. Bend it up. Done. And you could put a couple wraps. You know, the stronger the spring you want, you could put. So there's a couple loops in there. It doesn't just have to be one. You know, you could do a couple. I'll cut that off. You know, some springs have two loops or so to give it a lot more strength. So now it's like a key ring. And so now it won't bend and slide off, less likely to. Now you got a nice throttle return spring or something else, or we could stretch that out and we could put just a, a regular hoop on it. You know, we could put it, we could make it a big long, long standard just sp spring. That's the nice thing about spring steel is it does have give to it, but when you bend it too far, it stays. And that's all we're doing. You know, I could play around with that a little bit. That's an, that's an ugly loop, but 
Now, if you want to scavenge some good spring steel wire, a good source of that is actually at old tires. To give you a good idea of what it looks like in there, you can see the wire is just sitting all the way around. You just take your grinder wheel and you'll ruin the uh, some of the wire, just a little bit of it, but you just make a groove and this is just a uh, any abrasive wheel. This is a diamond wheel, but any abrasive wheel. Grab the loop. Looks like it's actually four wires, four sets of wires, just wound around and around and probably uh, 10 feet long or better. Well, there you go. These springs are actually made with the inside of the old tire. They work really good. This ends up being about the same as a uh, number 17 music wire, which is about 39 thousandths of an inch. Um, it has some good pull. The, the bigger the loop you do, the, uh, the softer the pull is for the length. The smaller it is, the tighter. These springs are about the same. And this one has um, maybe a quarter, maybe not even that much of the pull of this skinnier one. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.